What's going on everybody? JJ Simmons, Thou Shall Prosper TV. Listen, I'm right now, I'm in the city. I'm uh, two hours and a half um, north of Houston. I'm 20 miles south of Dallas, and I'm in a city right now called Ennis, Texas. Listen, I'm on my way to a church in this uh, local community called Refiner's Fire International Church. And one of my favorite, one of my favorite teachers of the Word of God is in this city today. And when I saw it on his website, I say, my God, I looked at my wife, I said, listen, next week, I'm going to Dallas. Praise God, which was, you know, 20 miles south of Dallas. Same thing, in his Texas. And listen, Gary Cassi, this man of God has a TV show on uh, global television. The name of his show is called Fixing the Money Thing. This man has a saying that he says, that God has given him. He says, you cannot find your destiny in life until you fix the money thing. My God, I never forget it years ago. I saw him on Christian television and I, I ordered one of his products and my God, it was called The Now Revolution and I promise you, that thing changed my life. What's going on everybody? This is JJ Simmons and you are watching Thou Shall Prosper. Hey. How you doing, man of God? I'm doing great. Let me tell you a story. Before I, did, before I came to this church today, I pulled up in the parking lot and I did an intro video to this interview. I said, I'm releasing my faith and I'm going to get this interview with oh, this yeah. man of God. So as y'all can see, I released my faith. The, it, it, came, it came to pass. Yep. Tell them who you are, sir. Gary Cassie, and we travel teaching the kingdom of God. Faith Life Now. Faith Life Now. We've been traveling. Uh, well, we started television probably 12 years ago, right. and of course we pastor a church for 20 years, and uh, it's been quite a journey to see what God's done all those years, but we have a passion. God spoke to us to teach people, you know, nine years living in debt, yeah. uh, antidepressants, panic attacks, IRS, judgments, liens, credit card, you know, the whole mess. Yeah, pawn shops just to find enough food to buy a half a meal trying to split it with kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember hearing the story about when you was at the gas pump, you pulled oh, yeah. off and the whole thing came off. You know, man, I'm telling you, um, your ministry has really, I know you hear it a lot, but it's important that you hear it again. Because I promise you, a few days ago, I received the partner package in the mail with the little MP3 player thing. Oh, yeah. And I re-listened to your story about oh, the yeah. Albania story. Mm -hmm. And I never knew that was the story of Albania mm -hmm. until you really broke it down. And I remember you saying, the blue haze came mm -hmm. in the room. Yeah. Let me ask you this, as, as a, because, you know, in all simplicity, in all honesty, you carry a financial anointing. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, how, how do you continuously continue to teach this in spite of the persecution? Well, <laughs> there is some strange prosperity teaching. Right. Okay. You know, I think I'm balanced. Right. I think that's why I'm not persecuted as much, you know, because I have the evidence of it. I'm not, right. you know, what I'm saying is you hear a lot of the, the raw, raw kind of right, prosperity right. without the, without the instructions. Right. So God, my, my mission is, is instructions. Right. And here's how the kingdom operates. And so, I, you know, I have a, I have a business. Uh, most of my money comes from my businesses. Mm -hmm. So people aren't going to criticize me for owning something because I have businesses. Right. But the bottom line is the kingdom operates. It does. Okay, you have a book called Money Mysteries mm -hmm. from the Master. I read it, and uh, the the the, the, uh, the parable about the um the Good Samaritan. He told them. He said, "Whatever it costs, whatever it costs, I'm gonna pay for it." I have never heard that story broke down. You normally just hear that story about he did a good deed, right. but not noticing, not uh highlighting the point that the man said, "I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of everything." Yeah. Talk to us about that story about catching the understanding that the kingdom of God will finance your, your kingdom agenda. That's right. Well, the bottom line, JJ, and who's <laughs> ever listening, the kingdom operates by laws. Right. Now, we hear these stories, the parables, stories Jesus told. We've heard them in you know, all of our life in you know, Sunday school classes. But when God said to me that it's a kingdom, these stories are written to show a principle, laws. And so I began to look at these parables from a different perspective. You know, most people think, well, it's just Jesus was there, that's why it happened, because he's Jesus after all, you know, he did these things. And like that story, the Good Samaritan, it's a good story. And mm -hmm. on the surface, it looks like he did a good deed, and that's, you know, God is love and does a good deed. But the story's much, much deeper than that. 
All right, you have to kind of dig into it because there's a lot more to it, and no one that ever attaches money to that story. Right, never. Yeah, so, you know, the story is the guy was hit by robbers and left alongside the road. And so, you know, a Levite comes by, a priest comes by, religious people, and they, they, they pass by, they don't touch it. And the whole thing happened because this, this legal guy asked Jesus, you know, about life, and they were kind of fighting over like inheritance and all that and different things. And so Jesus kind of confronted him on that and dealt with the issue of money. And so this legal guy really got up and said, well, who's my friend then? You know, who am I supposed to take care of? And kind of, a, kind of a, he was just testing Jesus. And Jesus caught him on that, saying, you know, who's your friend? Here's, here's what you should be doing. Here's what God would do, is that you would go out of the way to help somebody like that. And of course, that part we got. Jesus gave us that part. You know, right, help, right. We understand that part. But the story ends where this uh, the Good Samaritan is a Samaritan who the Jews despise. Right. So Jesus is kind of throwing his face. You know, this, the Samaritan takes this guy to an inn and says to him, whatever, whatever it takes, you know, I'll come back and reimburse you, but whatever it takes to heal this guy up. And he gave him two silver coins, and he says, whatever it takes. And so the whole story is the perspective of what would God do if he was there, whatever it costs. So the first thing we learn from the story is God's perspective is whatever it costs, money, whatever it costs, okay. God says whatever it costs. He's in the people business. People are worth it, whatever it costs. But the guy took this guy to the end and told him, here's the money part. He took this guy to an end and said, okay, I'll come back and pay you whatever it costs. So how did the innkeeper hear that? The innkeeper is in business, right? right. To make a profit. Right. So when this guy knocks on his door and says, here, take care of this guy. Religion says, we have a duty, you know, we have to serve, we have to, you know, you know, we love God, so we have, you know, it's like a pressure, we have to do things. God, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. No, I understand. But God wants us, you know, it's like a duty. Basically, what I'm saying is, it's a duty with nothing in return. Right. Right. Okay. That's the mindset of religion. Right. Do it. You know, God. You know, and certainly, we're grateful towards God, and we do worship Him by doing things like that. But that's not how God operates. So He says, whatever it costs. Right. And I'll bring the silver coins back. So the innkeeper doesn't hear it as duty. He doesn't hear that statement like, "Oh, gee, I got to take care of this guy." Or, oh, gee, I got to serve in the nursery. Oh, gee, I got to go to this church today. Oh, gee, you know, kind of a drudgery. Yeah. He's in business. And so this guy's offering an unlimited check to him to take care of God's business. Right. So here's the thing I tell people. That if you'll go into business with God, that innkeeper would say to that guy, uh, excuse me, do you have any more guys like this I can take care of? Wow. Because you have an unlimited check. When we hook up with God to take care of His business, the people business, we have an unlimited check. God's going to fund His agenda, the people business. I tell people, you want to get on God's, you know, pipeline of paychecks, you get in the people business with Him, and it's an unlimited check. It's an unlimited opportunity to take care of God's heart, people, and He's going to make sure He funds that. Make sure you're paid, you, you, know, you have profit. Amen. Yeah, Listen, amazing thing. because of respect of your time, I'm going to ask you this last question. And I'm going to let you go just All to right, sit sir. here with you. It means All a lot right. to me. I just preached a sermon a few weeks ago called um, Promise Participation. No, Principle Participation Promise. You, because of you, I have learned to identify my participation in the story so I can receive the promise that God is showing us inside the story. Let me ask you to simplify spiritual scientists for my people. Simplify. What that is? Yeah, simplify. I, just, I just mentioned that the stories in the Bible, if you understand that the, the God is, is a kingdom, that the kingdom of God is a government, that it's based on laws, it functions by laws, you can learn the laws. Amen. That was the biggest revelation of my life, was when yeah. God taught me that it's not begging, it's not mercy, but it's based on laws. When I was destitute, God spoke to me and said, you're in this mess because you don't know how my kingdom operates. Although we've been a Christian for years. So I began to dissect the laws. How, how, the, how did the fish multiply? How was this person healed? Why wasn't this person healed? We read the Bible from the perspective as how does this work? And God began to teach us all these principles and how it operates, which he wants us to know so we can duplicate it. So spiritual scientists, all I'm saying is 
don't just read the Bible like you know, I'm reading a story. Ask a question like a scientist, why, how did that happen? What principle, spiritual principle was enacted that brought that to pass in that situation? Okay, listen, my name is, oh, another thing. Mm -hmm. He has a TV show, he mentioned it to you earlier. Please go to his website, Faith Life Now, the TV show, Fixing the Money Thing, because you cannot find your destiny in life That's until right. yep. you, you fix, fix the, the money, money thing. thing. Amen. Exactly right. Listen, my name is JJ Simmons, and you are watching Thou Shall Prosper.